عزیز اوز بان زبینی این پیمر همسید یا من ویدان می انجان می دهید سیز بان زمین جوستدی نیچی So this is when you came into This is when I came into this. When the student would applaud me and say, Oh, teacher, you can teach. They were very proud of me and they loved me. They would even, they would even boast with me in front of others people. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Then some would be like, what? You know, you know, teacher, are you serious? Then they will say, yes, my teacher, no, no, to fool that we really had it to my level. They used to love me so much, and I used to teach them until they understood. Mimi ni mwanafunzi hapa Sunshine and Tuning College. Mimi ni meka hapa kwa miezi tano. Na tangu miezi tano, ni mejua mambo mingi sana, kushona. Na shona kuota sa shule. Na hata sa design kiyo ni naendelea na kufunzo. Nothing can stop Rhoda, not even as a woman living with disability. Her dream is to be self-employed and to inspire other people out there. Today, we're in Thika and we're joined by CEO and founder of Sunshine Knitting and Training, Ms. Rhoda Njoki. Welcome to today's episode of Inspire Kenya. My name is Yvonne Kawira and this is Rhoda's story. My name is Rhoda Njoki. Yeah, I'm visitally challenged, as you can see. I walked and taught with the challenges, some pronunciation, especially in Swahili, I taught with difficulties. My favorite language is English. That is why I have, I have preferred it. So I'm Rodan Choki. My dad was at I'm Tamba, a Tamba from Kitui. My mom at Kuru from Naturu. Okay. My mom and dad separated when I was so little. Uh, I was not even working, I was so little. Okay. So I used to live with my mom at Naturu. At what point did you discover you were different from other, your sisters, other children on plane? Were you mm. born like this? I discovered that because sometimes I could talk and people could not understand and somehow I would feel down. Mm? Mm -hmm. Some people would look down on me like judging my visitor appearance. Like, you always wear that because you are this way and I know neither. Mm -hmm. So it was really a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was life growing up in Angola? Mm -hmm. Life growing up, it was due because I was with my mom. But when I was 12 years in class two, my mom passed away. Mm -hmm. And that's where my misery began. Uh, when my mom passed away, life wasn't easy. She was buried at the tree. Mm -hmm. So I had to be left at the tree with my dad. Mm -hmm. So after one year, my dad gave me away to my brother. Mm -hmm. My brother, my brother lives at, at Kilimambojo, here at Lake at Kilimambojo. Mm -hmm. So my brother had a wife and a daughter. Mm, and life wasn't easy there. Would you like to explain to us what some of the challenges that you experienced while living with them? 
Uh-huh. I felt so different because uh, I knew there was that space, there was that emptiness of mother love, which I never thought. I felt that she treated me different from her daughter because I wasn't her. But um, I really love her and I'm forgotten. I've forgotten maybe in that I, I went to do, although they were not just stressing, like sometimes I would get food not enough. I don't remember that I wasn't living comfortable. I felt like I needed something, I needed a mother, I needed a parent to feel that emptiness. Maybe that is why I felt like she treated me differently. But she wasn't really a bad person. Okay. Do you still keep in touch with them? My brother's wife, we don't keep in touch, but her daughter, we do. My brother, we do sometimes, but it has been done. Long since we communicated. Okay. Yeah. But my brother was so loving and was taking care of me. But when he was away, I was living with my brother's wife. Okay. So um, my aunt wasn't living far away from me. I used to visit her sometimes, and she would tell me to go to my brother. But my aunt did something very good to me because in the midst of those challenges, uh, her daughter was studying in another school, which was a boarding school for sisters. Okay. So one day we, we visited her with my auntie, and my auntie was able to, to inquire for my sponsorship there. And God enabled me to get a sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So I got a sponsorship at Sister School. So most of the time I was in school for a time, maybe when it grows, I will go home. So it's from class four, I studied at a boarding school. So I went to school for people without disability. Because I knew I'm not that much challenge. I usually encourage myself. Nana and you are not that challenged. How was life in school? The teacher loved me and the student loved me, but there was a challenge in handwriting. My handwriting was very, very poor, and I have to know my handwriting is poor. So in my school, and I was slow, in my school lifetime, I never wrote notes. I used to borrow the student notes, then I would read. But I used to do the assignment. The teachers used to understand my handwriting because they were used to it. My handwriting was really, really poor. So during, from, during class 8 exam, they had to give my disability letter to the next since I was different from the others. And I, I was given time and they considered my handwriting and I passed really well with B on the subject. Wow. Okay, after finishing your primary school, what happened? I finished my primary school. The sisters were impressed by what I got. So they sent me to high school. Uh, when I was in form one, my sister took me from my brother. My sister was the one living with me. Okay. And in my sister, I found joy, and she treated me like her daughter. My sister loves me so much, she provides me with everything I need. So during the, the high school, I was living with my sister, and I had to 
before I started living alone. Okay. Mm. I didn't go to a special school on, a, on high school. I went to the normal school. Though it was really a challenge because of anxiety, yeah. I was still asking notes from my friend. I wasn't able to write notes. Mm -hmm. So they would give me a read and I used to do well in class and them. Mm -hmm. And the teacher used to understand my handwriting mm -hmm. and I was doing well in my assignment. Great. What was your favorite subject in high school? My favorite subject was CRI, uh -huh. Swahili and English. Great. Yeah. So after high school, tell us how life was after you finished high school. So I did the high school but never performed the way I expected. They were to give my disability letter to the net. As you know, the net would look and since it is not indicated, indicated that they are dealing with a special person, they treat all exams like they were for normal person. And when they saw mine, maybe they just saw that that person doesn't know how to write or maybe she just went to school. So I got what I never really expected. Like I got the minor all the subjects. And I knew at least English, Israeli and and Sierra I would get at least B I'm A. Mm -hmm. But to my utter surprise, on contrary of what I usually get, mm -hmm. I was so surprised I got D minor all the subjects. So I took another step of going to special school. I really loved the education so much yeah. and I wanted to have a bright future. I had a dream of being a manager, managing something. I went to Joy Town to repeat. Joy Town is here in Vidya, a school for for person living with disability. Mm -hmm. So I went there so that they could at least check my handwriting. So when I went to, to register in that school, the principal there rejected me due, due to my previous performance. Mm -hmm. I really begged her and even cried out for her to give me, to her to give me a, a chance to at least repeat and prove myself that I'm able to reach my dream. Yeah. The principal told me, no, we are not going to accept you with this performance. So I had no choice than join a training center. But let me tell you that God always knows exactly. where, where to what is best for us. So, as you say, who sponsored me in primary and secondary, they joined me and told me they would still sponsor me to study Nietzsche. Wonderful. So this is when you came into This is when I came into this. Tell us about knitting, uh, the training for knitting and why you decided to make it a business. Well, you see now I have been I have been rejected at high school yeah. with person for disability. So I had no choice and try this. It wasn't my passion at first, but I had no choice. So it was the only option I had. When I went to training, I used to despise myself so much. Mm -hmm. I used to look down on myself. Sometimes I would sit by myself and feel so bad because I was studying with the people who never even went to high school. Some reached class two, some five, some eight. So I used to say, why did I spend all those years trying to read and all that, only to end up in the training center? So I used to despise it, but in time I learned it and 
I attempted it in the source of the living. Yeah. So tell us now about how you decided to make it this a training institute for, for students who want to learn knitting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, when I learned knitting, mm -hmm. Uh, after graduating now from knitting, after yes. I had finished knitting, uh, first of all, I had nothing to do. I was so high dot since I didn't have the machine. So I decided to learn the computer. Mm -hmm. Computer, this is the computer. The packages. This is my work of publisher. Okay. Ah, this, is this is my word of publisher. Mm -hmm. this is so nice. I still had the passion to have another job beside knitting. Right. So mm -hmm. when I did publisher, I tried looking for job to do with the computer, which I never got. So I I got the machine, and when I got the machine, by those days, I got one student. That one student, I used to teach, and she would understand. I would just, I would just slow by slow, teaching step by step. And I had a passion in teaching, and it was my best. Let me Teaching ask you, was my best. who helped you buy these machines? Did you get support from probably the sisters or? Yeah, how? sisters mm -hmm. supported me. Okay. And then now, when did you start this training institute here? Now, after, after dating a student, and now I know how to, to teach and have the staff and my talent. <laughs> I was employed. At first, before I started this, I was employed as a knitting teacher. So when I was employed as a knitting teacher, uh, I used to have 11 students, mm -hmm. the mamas, and they, were, they used to love knitting. They used to love how I teach and I would teach step by step and they would understand. What's the name of the school where you went for the training to so, learn how to knit? Salamiano training, training Center. Okay. What inspired you to start this business as a self-employed person and also to impact the skills to other people? Mm -hmm. When I knew that I was really good in teaching, and when the teacher would applaud, when the student would applaud me and say, oh, teacher, you can teach, they were very proud of me and they loved me. They would even, they would even boast with me in front of others, people. You know, you know, you will be a teacher, way to. Then some would be like, what? Who you need teacher? Are you serious? Then they will say, yes, me teacher, no, no, to fool that we really had it to my level. They used to love me so much, and I used to teach them until they understood. And thereby then I discovered that my talent was really good in teaching. And so I preferred having my own school of teaching, my own school of teaching, and because the salary was really little too, I also wanted to depend on myself, yes. not to bed, not to depend on my sister. I wanted to be fully independent. So I decided to start my own training center. My vision was big. I used to see myself having so many students. Mm -hmm. I have, I used to see myself employing teachers to help me teaching. And I would see myself as a principal, wow. sitting in office and teaching sometimes. Sometimes the teachers teaching and also paying them. That was my dream. I also wanted to inspire other people living with disability.
What I want I wanted to tell them to show them that you can do something right. in the society. Mm -hmm. We need equal opportunities. Yes. Person with disability, with or without disability, we need to have equal opportunity. So me having a knowledge was also to inspire another person right. living with challenges to show her or him, don't despise yourself. You are more than what people think you are. What are some of the challenges you've encountered while you're doing this business? So when I was doing this, when I'm doing this business, since ever I started, the challenges are I never got the student as I expected. I only got two students, and one was told that job, I was told that 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 I was told Ndiyo ajimaliza maybe tunaenda saidiana tushona nikiwa na order sabingine tunasaidiana tunauza tunajawana pesa so the challenge ni ile hata nyumba sijeza kujivipia bado nalipiwa na my sister and you need to be and sometimes an a challenge you that the other system Lazima alipe hiyo ya ati ndi ya nilipie na ati ya siyo stebo so anaswing sana ndi ya nilipie. So hapa hile pesa napata ajijudishi na mwono ya nilipio tupata student. Mwenye wata nisaidia pia mini disaidia na nisaidia wengine. Ukuna message gani kwa wale watu ambao wanaishi na disabilities na wanona ni kama hakuna kitu wanezafanya na maisha yao? What message do you have for them? Mm -hmm. My message to them is to love you as themselves as a well. Never to despise you as themselves. To accept themselves the way they are because they never created themselves. There's a God in heaven who created them and he created an image. Mm -hmm. And you are like any other person. Never to feel isolated, never to feel different from other people. What other people can do, they can do better too. If I had lived listening the voice from other people who judge us from outside appearance, I would have given up, but I never. Most people come here and when they want to buy pullover or when they inquire for study, mm. they ask me, are you the one who is teaching? Mm. Are you the one who is knitting? And I confidently tell them I am the one. Yes, I'm the one who is teaching and I can do it. And I have God in me to do him. Not to do me, me myself I can, but through him who created me with a reason and a purpose. I'm able and I can do it and do it better than any other teacher somewhere else. Okay, now I'll come over this side so you can show me how you do your sweaters. Mm -hmm. Teach me from scratch, like from mm -hmm. assembling to threading. Mm -hmm. To know the first step. Mm -hmm. The first step is this, we remove this one and then we put the oil. This oil is to fasten the machine. When we remove, we take it back to the device. Then you know the upper. You are now a student. Yes. Wait up, I show you. No, this one is a, is a machine. This one are the needles. 
The needle that I used to knit isn't because the national is in the needle. This is the white thing in the ruler. A ruler is numbered from zero to ten. Then from zero to ten. So the whole machine had two hundred needles. And the whole machine is from 10 to 0 and from this one to 0. So the amount starts with the 2 and I have this side dash 2 and I have this one. So now to under the needles from 2 and a half. Okay. 2 and a half. Huh? Now to up to 2 and a half. Up to 2 and a half. This one is called stitch, stitch line. Stitch line, it controls the, the stitches you need. Some are heavy, no, 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 Some are not heavy, uh, light. To na ile sweta right, to na ile sweta mzito. Uwe na defend na easy stitches. So, the smaller the number, the heavy the sweater but the bigger the number the lighter the sweater so the small the stitch the heavier the sweater the larger the stitcher the lighter the the, 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 the stitch but i prefer i prefer using the small number so I would get the heavy one and so that the people would love my work. Kwa Martina naitwa Purity na nimeokoka. Mimi ni mwanafunzi hapa Sunshine and Training College. Ulianza kusomea hapa leo? Mimi nimekaa hapa kwa miezi 5 na tangu miezi 5 nimejua mambo mingi sana, kushona, mashona kutoka sa shule. Okay. Na hata sa design ndiyo ninaendelea na kufunzo. Okay. Yeah. Unize sema experience yako hapa imekuwa aji? Masama yuko vipi mwalimu wako aji? Ah, experience yangu hapa imekuwa mzuri. Masomo yuko sawa. Mwalimu ni mzuri, anaeleza, unaelewa vizuri. Mm-hmm. Aki ni nampenda ni mwalimu mzuri. Okay. Yeah. Unize niambia ni products gani unaweza kutengeneza comfortably bila mwalimu kukua kikombe. Tengeneza kitu fulani. Unaweza fanya ni? Eh, Ninaesa nikashona sweta sa shule, school pulfers. Mm-hmm. Nikashona mafi na leg warmers na bushuli. Okay. Yeah. Kwa nini ulichuzi kukuja hishuli na ulijua aji about hishuli? Eh, eh, nilijua, ilikuwa ni define connection ni. Sababu eh, kuna sanloita alikuwa amekuja kumuandikia isi imi, isi hishuli yake mm-hmm. na alikuwa my husband. Sasa kutoka hapo wakaongea niko nilikuwa na experience ya kushona manguo. Sasa nikatamani sana kujua mambo ya sweaters. Ndiyo sasa waliongea nikaweza kujoin shule. Sawa. Ni nini zaidi 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 unapendea mwalimu wako? Ni nini una admire about her sana? E, kitu moja huwa napenda huyu mwalimu ni mcha Mungu kwanza. Ni mtu ambaye ni trustworthy. Ukiwa na yeye sasa singine huwa ananijenga sana. Even though ni mdoko lakini kwa neno la Mungu ako na kitu ananijenga sana tunajengana sana kwa hivyo mimi nilimpenda tu kwa sababu ya kile cha Mungu kiko ndani yake na hii hii mambo ya kufunza kwake si kitu ya ya ya, ku, ya kujifunza yani ni talent iko ndani yake kwa sababu nili, nili, wakati nimekaa na yeye nimeona ni mtu anaweza akawe aka, aka, aka transform mtu akiwa ajui chochote anampanda kitu na anakuwa kitu ya maana okay. kwa society. Message kwa Kenya pale nje ni kutazama na wangetaka kujua zaidi kuhusu haya mambo. Eh, naweza nikawaambia hasa mno napenda sana ku encourage wa mama. Naweza nikaambia kuna mama pale nje ana kitu anafanya na maisha vile iko siku hizi maisha ni ngumu sana. Kwa hivyo si vizuri kukaa hivyo idol kwa nyumba ama kuka, ama kungojea kupewa ama kufanya kazi yenye. Hakika Si nzuri hata kwa Mungu 
Ninaesa nikawambia watafute kitu. Hii kasi ya kuchona ni kasi mzuri sana. Na is very cheaper. Watafute kitu, watamani sana kupata ujuzi wao wenyewe. Ukiujua kitu yako mwenyewe ukifujibania kazi, utakuwa mtu wa maana sana. Na utaishi maisha ambayo ni ya, ni ya kutamanika hata na wengine. Kwa hivyo nawambia, wasichana, wale wana kasi ya kufanya, wale wa mama ambao wako kwa manyumba wana kasi ya kufanya na wana experience yoyote hata yule mtu ameweka kasi yake ni vizuri ukuwe na experience ukikuja kusoma hapa in fact unasoma 3 hours na unaenda na endeleza na kazi zako unaweza ukakucha sacrifice masaa matatu upate experience na hiyo itakusaidia wewe na kizazi kizazi, kizazi cha watoto wako Nini ngini natangini zanga hapa other than kutraini watu? Aha, uh -huh. I need the pullovers, baby suit, lady warmers, Marvin Boshori, design for boys, different design. I don't have the red, that's why I see the tendeneza nini. Kutangineza seta moja inatekolo. Inatekolo. Uh -huh. One day on. That's from scratch. Uh, uh, I don't need even one and a half sweater in a day. Uh -huh. And then you push it. Yes. Well, so much, Anna. Nataja tujijumbushe. Na juu mwezo ya tushona mshipi ya 50 rows. Latini leo tunashona ya dati rows. 50 rows tunajua tujienda 24. 24 ndiyo tunajanda hii hi white. Ndiyo tunajanda 25 ndiyo unatua hizo shimo. Sasa leo hii ilikuwa latini vile tuwebomua. Sasa leo utaenda hadi. 14 ndio wete hii white ujena 14 wete hii white alafu utoe hizi vitu vile tu nilikuonyesha alafu uende hadi that venye nilikuonyesha alafu fold tumeelewana ah sasa shida hii white uende hadi 14 vile tu nilikuonyesha ah endelea tuende na hii uende hadi 14 sio ni 13 and the land I go in there and it put it. To have the duty. Ah, in the dark. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Sour and the and it put it. Very good. It is your dad in Chinese. Fourteen. It is your fourteen. We want to make call. Tama hivi. Sine nijifundisha. Sasa tunaeja anaza. Izi unajua ndiyo mwini. Sasa ni anaza. Tua hii anaza uwezi ya mwini. Chujua mwini. Ata ni chujua uwezi. Uwele na umodi alafu utua hivi wa masimu. Iyo hivi ni chafu. But it is a I want you to win a Romodia if you are fifteen. Very good. Now I want you to wait this all. We let you need it for measure easy. Then you let that in So what message do you have for your sister who stood by you when everyone else turned their backs against you? What would you like her to know? My sister, I really want to appreciate you very much because you treat me as one of your daughter. You give me so much love 
And you always make sure I have anything that I need. My watch is not stable. Sometimes I may get order, sometimes I may not. I had the expectation of getting more students, so I would at least support you. But I haven't been able to, but I really appreciate everything you do for me. I promise you that one day I will stand on my feet and I will do the best to make sure you live a life that you always want me to live. I also want to give you a better life because I know you are also struggling to help me. Not because you, are, you have many, but you deny yourself so I can get. And it's always my desire that I also deny myself or oh, I also have enough for both of us. And I promise because our God lives, one day I will have a bigger shop, one day I will have very many students, mm. one day I will support you because I will be a principal and we will live the life we have ever wished. So what message do you have for Kenyans and how can Kenyans reach you? I just want to tell you that when you see us people with disability, don't judge us by us by our visitor appearance. Learn to approach and know who we truly are. Learn to approach and know if we can do something that we, are, we tell you we can do. Don't despise us. We also need the equal opportunity. With or without disability, we need the opportunity to prove ourselves. Beside me having my own business, I also believe I can get opportunity in the society. I also want to be recognized in the society that I'm able to do more than knitting. Knitting could be my leisure time. I could also do other office work, maybe manage something because in the mind I'm intelligent. Also, if you can get some student somewhere and you want me to teach them and you want to bless me with them, or you can find a school for me. Only a day to school and only a day student. I promise I will never fail you. I just want to depend on myself. I want to do something in my with standing on myself. I don't want to live a life of burden. If you are also able to support me with dreads, easy news is that you Shona, I would really appreciate any, any support I would appreciate and I would pray for me for you because I'm good in praying. We would a lot of Kenyans who want to reach you, maybe they are looking for a trainer in meeting or to just support you, how can they reach you? You can reach me through this number, 0796-17-CGC8-CGC6. Okay, and where is the shop located? It's located at Zita, Fidancho, mm -hmm. Jonatu, opposite the supermarket, along Buludika Road. Perfect.